Welcome to another episode of The Brand Called You, a podcast and podcast show that brings you leadership lessons, knowledge, experience, and wisdom from hundreds of successful individuals from around the world. I am your host, Ashutosh Garg, and today I'm very privileged to welcome a very tall technology leader from Dubai, Mr. Piyush Chauhan. Piyush, welcome to the show. Thank you, Ashutosh, for having me. Thank you. Uh, Piyush is the group CIO of the Lulu Group International, headquartered in the UAE. In his own words, he's a digital evangelist with a passion to transform businesses using technology. He's passionate about working with startups and innovation-led companies, and is a writer and a thought leader. So, Piyush, let's talk about your journey as a digital uh, evangelist. Tell me about the scope of work you handle in such a highly diversified group. Sure. So uh, I think uh, at, at heart, as I have uh, always believed, I have uh, grown my career. I've seen uh, retail growing uh, mm-hmm. and changing and transforming over the last uh, two decades. Mm-hmm. And uh, I've seen changes happening with technology at its core for the last two decades. And as you would know, uh, I, was, I was a young enthusiast when the dot-com bubble uh, happened uh, in, in the 2000s. Yeah. And since then, I've always had a belief that this is something, this is the moment in which retail has to transform. Mm -hmm. And I think in the next decade, what has happened is the power of retail has moved on from the retailer to the consumer. I think that happened in the first part of the decade. And what has happened in the last uh, uh, decade is that that power has actually multiplied multifold now the customer is calling the shots not the retailers mm. and so if you see the evolution of retail obviously if we go 100 years back maybe everything was mom and pop stores yeah, all over the world yeah very very small stores all across corner uh, of the streets and then in the middle people believed that uh, well if you consolidate there are uh, supply chain efficiencies there are economies of scales and, and stuff like that and that is when the Big box retail uh, started uh, coming in the last four decades of the last century. Mm-hmm. Yeah, like for maybe from 1960s, 70s till uh, the 2000s, uh, the consolidation was happening. Walmart was expanding uh, worldwide. Uh, so-called penetration of modern retail was happening, and suddenly this new avatar came, which is the internet. Yeah, mm-hmm. which changed everything. Yeah, uh, it changed. Uh, visibility, it changed uh, a lot of uh, kind of information which was held tightly within the four walls of a retailer because earlier discovery was the biggest problem for a consumer, right? Once internet came, it basically democratized that entire information and because of which for the last two decades, what we are seeing is the rebirth of a new retail format. It is still evolving. I don't think we have reached uh, anywhere near what we want to see from a technology perspective and I believe that the next two decades will be more interesting than the past two decades. And so if you, if you were to ask me what I am up to in, in Lulu, uh, I was uh, kind of hired here about uh, two years back and my charter would be to use digital tools and transform retail as much as possible so that we are ready for the future. Fantastic. So that's an amazing segue to my next question. And then you said you are a retailer at heart first and a CIO as a follow up to that. Uh, tell me, how do you see technology changing retail, the supply chain, and warehousing? Yeah, and as I was saying, uh, what has happened, uh, obviously, when we were, and, and when uh, in, in the past century, when people were studying MBA, the, the one word that uh, used to be featuring very often is customer centricity. Yeah? And I think it was all uh, still lip service. Yeah, uh, the uh, the so-called big brands, I, I would not name anyone, but let's say the Cokes and the uh, Pepsis of the world always felt that they are very customer-centric because the messaging was very customer-oriented and, and stuff like right. that. But mm-hmm. the entire organization was never aligned to the customer value, customer belief, mm-hmm. although there were a lot of value stream mapping exercises which would have been done by a lot of these organizations. They were not able to align the entire organization towards the cons- consumer. And there were limitations. So, for example, the back end, let's say the inbound supply chain, the warehousing, never were measured based on the customer success. Mm-hmm. And, and, the, and the customer metrics were more uh, measured uh, for, let's say, a marketing officer and the related uh, functions, which were more closer to the consumer. 
what has happened and what is happening now is the true sense of customer centricity is building up now yeah right. which means that all the functions now even the inbound supply chain even the warehousing even your store staff everybody has to now align towards one goal create value for the customer and value is today measured value is equal to experience value is not equal to price yeah value is not equal to product which was the uh, kind of thing of the past people used to say that if i get the best assortment at the best price i am the best retailer yeah no longer the case mm. that product paradigm is moving towards an experience paradigm and when that experience paradigm comes in everybody has to align the, your warehousing which means that your fulfillment function has to align towards creating experience for the consumer and as 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 we know now experience is n is equal to 1 yeah earlier experience was having a large format in which thousands of people come in and you create a single experience for everybody mm. but in today's context because of digital experience is n is equal to 1 which means that ashutosh comes into my shop he likes abc he wants to shop in abc way i have to make sure that i align that towards his or her choice so that he walks out from that store amazed without uh, any friction uh, in his in his shopping journey and are you seeing a lot of uh, technology changing the retail experience on the shop floor technology has to and, and that uh, that has to happen so uh, we are we are exploring technologies in which uh, i think in the next 4 to 5 years i believe that 20% of the stores worldwide will be uh, what i call as cashless stores yeah uh there are there are uh, i am i'm uh, kind of in, engaging with two or three startups which are already deploying there is one startup uh, which has deployed over 100 stores worldwide and and growing at uh, at a pace which we have never seen so uh technology is going to be the core and there are three three big advancement if you ask, ask me about what has changed in technology there have been three big advancement in technology one is your sensing technologies Uh, which means your ability to sense movement of people your ability to identify people at, and things like that mm-hmm. have grown leaps and bounds in the last 5 to 7 years yeah with the advancement of vision ai with the advancement of uh, uh, automation in terms of understanding the behavior and i think that is is a huge uh, uh, when i was uh, maybe uh, 10 years back if i were to basically implement a video analytic solution we would have to struggle so hard to even get the feed to the to the center to analyze it yeah today it is on the click of a button you have tools which are so easy to configure the camera technology has evolved the ability to understand that uh, feed has evolved and that is giving a new paradigm and so as retailer i am seeing the customer in a very different form yeah mm-hmm. earlier we used to see customer when they used to do a transaction and i used to analyze the transaction log mm-hmm. at the pos yeah that was my source of understanding the consumer mm. um, if i had a loyalty program i would say okay uh, mr asutosh comes uh, to my store he comes roughly twice a week uh, or uh, twice a month uh, this is his shopping pattern and blah 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 but i was able to do that and uh, what we know is uh, in a, in a physical store the average con- conversion let's say in a grocery store is about 30 to 40% mm-hmm. but in a, in a let's say fashion store the conversion is less than 10% which means that in a fashion store 90% of the people are coming in without doing any transaction right. and you don't know anything about it mm. but because of technology now i know exactly what people are coming in what they are doing where they are not uh, getting engaged why they are not getting engaged i can actually do some more deep analysis and hence your understanding of the consumer behavior has gone multifold so that piece of technology is one which is kind of creating that understanding of the consumer the next is the automation piece yeah in the stores yeah so uh, when i started in uh, tesco people used to walk around identify where the gaps are they will scan the location and say that these are the gaps now we are uh, on the verge of implementing robots in which the robot will walk through the aisle mm-hmm. every 10 minutes and tell you where the gaps are you don't need anything mm-hmm. yeah so these are the kind of technology innovations that we are seeing which will change the way things are Uh, going to be performed in the future and so the mundane task will be taken by automation mm-hmm. most of the heavy lifting has to be done by i would say understanding the consumer behavior and creating that personalized experience where n is equal to 1 incredible you know i must compliment you 
you are a retailer first. I've never heard such incredible uh, words from someone who's the leader of technology. Fantastic. So let me now move uh, Piyush to asking if you for your perspective on what technology is doing for the supply chain for in, into your stores and more importantly, supply chain to your customers. I mean, drones and all kinds of things are being talked about. Yeah. So uh, obviously uh, here again, the, uh, the change has been led by the consumer. Uh, obviously because of COVID, uh, digital commerce is now a reality. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, it was a reality pre-COVID as well, but I think the adoption was much slower. Uh, what has happened is uh, maybe it has grown 5x, 6x uh, post-COVID. And hence, the, the, the past uh, retail experience or the retail supply chain was around building in scale. Yeah, You bring in, in large containers, you store in large containers, then you consolidate and then you distribute across. That was the model. Uh, two things uh, which have changed as part of COVID. One is uh, this uh, habit pattern of uh, buying in bulk, storing in bulk and having a very large assortment that mm -hmm. has been... Uh, uh, changing. Uh, we are seeing extremely sharp focus around assortment. Uh, people are now buying much more uh, focused uh, products. Uh, the, the long tail of products is, is getting shortened, which means that uh, you need to rationalize your uh, assortment as much as possible. And so you don't need, uh, let's say, if you're uh, having pasta sauce as a category, mm -hmm. you don't need 200 varieties of pasta sauce any, anymore. Yeah, And that is what the customer is telling us, not that uh, we are doing that. Uh, now the, the customers are getting more focused, which means that you are, you need to have very sharp uh, pointed value products, uh, which are much more targeted towards a uh, segment of the customer. And now you can do that because your fulfillment engine has to be broken down into multiple smaller fulfillment engines. Hmm. It is no longer the cases in, in which you bring in bulk and then you kind of pass on that bulk uh, to, a, uh, to a large set of consumers. So the concept of, let's say, micro fulfillment centers, the concept of small uh, fulfillment centers, which are very near to the consumer. And what it helps is, it helps in terms of kind of easing your demand curve. Mm -hmm. Yeah, If you have a very large store, you need to carry a lot of inventory. And obviously, you will go wrong in a lot of products. And hence, your wastage is higher, your shrinkage is higher and, and stuff like that. But if you have a very focused, small micro fulfillment center, which carries inventory for three to four days, you are much closer to demand. You are able to turn around things much faster. And because technology is uh, now advanced and automation is there in the micro fulfillment centers, you are able to churn things much faster. You are able to replenish much faster. Your forecasting algorithms are much more accurate, which is where the entire waste in the supply chain is reduced. So your markdowns are reduced and you are able to give better value and experience to the consumer. Wow, incredible. And uh, one more perspective I'd love to get is, you know, do you see in, in developed markets like say Abu Dhabi or Dubai, uh, robots delivering food and drones delivering my weekly shopping? We are still a little away from that. Okay. Uh, uh, not because of the technology maturity, but I think the chaos that it will create. Yeah, so uh, uh, the, that uh, nobody has still any internet is something which is still democratic. It is not intruding into anybody. Mm -hmm. uh, but I think uh, space is something which is nobody's territory. Yeah, so uh, there are still regulations which are being evolved. And once those regulations evolve, I think drone delivery is happening uh, in, a, in a small catchment area and uh, for let's say medicines and in, in far flung places and stuff like that, emergency medicine and that that already is in place. But if if we were to say that millions of don't start uh, uh, conquering the space, it will be utter chaos. So there has to be some amount of yes. uh, regulation thought process before that be becomes a reality. Very well said. Very well said. So uh, my next question to you is that for someone who is so passionate about digital and who's constantly scanning, I'm sure, the world and what is happening in the business, what do you see as future disruptions? in technology for your space in the short term and the long term? So I would not say disruption, but I think the adoption of, let's say in the last uh, 10 years, people have been talking about so-called omnichannel commerce, yeah, uh, which which nothing but uh, creating a very seamless experience between physical and digital. Yeah, uh, Again, uh, that was still a concept, but if you scan uh, any retailer worldwide, they would say, I have an online uh, channel and I have a physical channel. 
they can do some orders which drop from online to physical and then physical to online and it is still a, a two separate channels which are trying to merge but it is not an experience which is unified and built omni channel yeah mm-hmm. so uh, as people call it uh, there are there are digital native organizations and there are non digital organizations yeah? right. similarly there are omni channel native retail and omni channel uh, or uh, non omni channel retail mm-hmm. yeah uh, when i say omni channel native retail it means that your ability of the consumer to move between physical and digital is so seamless that there is no friction yeah and that to me is the biggest uh, uh, kind of thing which will happen in the next 10 years and i think i'm seeing that and uh, i'll give you a prediction which i've been talking about uh, for quite a while now saying that we are bored of that black and white screen Uh, in which you are seeing a product uh, when when you go to amazon you see product which is on the white background and product listed people are getting bored of that yeah uh, and hence your ability to create real life experience in a virtual uh, uh, context okay. is something which is a reality there are a lot of virtual stores which are coming in so uh, a lot of good imagery with video as we were talking video is going to be a big player in which video enabled buying uh voice enabled buying and all those things integrated into a omni channel experience is something that will disrupt the space wow so uh piyush now going to talk about uh, your being passionate about working with startups and innovation led companies uh you know to to create digital assets help me understand this with an example and of course no names yeah sure so uh, obviously since i've been uh, in uh, kind of enabling technology leading technology large technology transformation programs in the, in the in the early part of this century mm-hmm. it was more working with the large biggies no names here but uh, uh, we know whom we are talking about yeah they will come in they will create a large uh, three year program two years program and uh, there will be a big team with multiple managers multiple leads and what has happened is uh, obviously when digital came in the way of uh, implementing technology has also transformed in the last 7 8 years i've been a big proponent of agile yeah uh, obviously a lot of people have adopted it but the uh, the segment which has adopted agile the most are the startup ecosystem yeah right. and they are the people who can really think on the toe implement things on at at a pace that nobody in the world can actually do mm-hmm. and hence in the last 3 uh, more, more than 5 years now uh, when when i started in uh, walmart i started engaging with the startups and mm-hmm. i could see the pace of change that they can bring in yeah uh, the amount of uh, we have been always taught think out of the box bring in fresh ideas how can we do that on the fly mm. uh, and stuff like that yeah these are all concepts but when you work with startup ecosystem you can see those things being implemented day in day out yeah they have no uh, kind of prejudice attached they will not work with large heavy uh, gantt charts and excel files mm-hmm. they will work in a very very agile format and they will kind of come and you ask them saying that look this is not working how can we do something different they will not give you a uh, half a million dollar change request form to say that sir if you sign it then i will do it yeah right. uh, so they will say that, okay no this makes sense yeah and they will be collaborative enough so that new way of working uh, of the startup ecosystem is something which excites me i i believe that that is how large enterprises need to transform they need to be small startup ecosystems within themselves and i believe that that uh, is happening reverse uh, that if if an enterprise starts working with uh, startup ecosystem they will understand the new way of working and then you start to pollinate that uh, uh, new way of uh, identifying problems identifying Uh, so we talk about design thinking concepts right they are classic examples of design thinking concept because they will they will have so much less cash mm. that they cannot uh, afford to do a lot of things within their four walls they have to go out to the consumer they have to try out things they have to understand and learn from it uh, they have to change things as we go along so i think these are things which have always excited me we have learned that as part of concepts but i think while working with startup ecosystem the innovation led uh, technology enablement is something which i extremely thrilled about fascinating so piyush i'm now going to ask you my last question um, and this is about you being uh, your avatar as a writer and a thought leader tell me about some of your writings and what you're doing in in this space so uh, 
as i was mentioning earlier omni channel i believe uh, has been a, a passion for me i mm-hmm. always thought that uh, although people are talking about omni channel uh, it is not the real omni channel which the consumer needs yeah the consumer is looking for a really frictionless omni channel experience and so uh, i'm working on a project at the moment in which uh, we are trying to create with uh, one of my colleagues who is a professor uh so he brings in a little bit of an academic uh, background and both of us are trying to work on a project in which we'll try to define what omni channel consumer experience actually means so mm-hmm. that is uh one part i think uh, with the with the day job uh, it is difficult to do it anything fast but uh, we are on the way to do that and we hope that uh, sometime uh, in 2022 we should be able to complete that project uh, apart from that uh, my uh, thought has been to make sure that people understand from real life experiences and uh, when i was uh, attending a lot of uh, seminars and uh, workshops in the past what i've seen is people always try to ha- hide stuff and then try to give only the uh, nice to have uh, views i'm a very candid guy yeah and that is why people uh, like to interact with me and so that is where i have kind of pen down a lot of my experiences so i've i've led ai projects and so um, if you see there are five or six articles that have uh, i've written in which what not to do in an ai project yeah how do you bring in ai into your enterprise right these are problems which are uh, uh, which are which a lot of organizations and leaders are struggling with and i help put in my experiences with the passion of uh, writing a little bit mm-hmm. and uh, take that message across to the wider world amazing Piyush, uh, thank you so much. It's been such a privilege speaking to you. Thank you for teaching me so many new things on technology. And as I mentioned during our conversation, um, I have never come across a CIO who speaks business first and technology later. Congratulations on this incredible achievement. Thank you again and good luck. Thank you so much. Thank you for listening to the brand called You video cast and podcast. A platform that brings you knowledge, experience and wisdom of hundreds of successful individuals from around the world. Do visit our website www.tbcy.in to watch and listen to the stories of many more individuals. You can also follow us on YouTube, Facebook, Instagram and Twitter. Just search for the brand called You.